Kevin T. Garden was born on November 15 in 1968 in Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. He worked for his stepfather, Lonnie Willison, for Willison Construction for several years, but recently began working for Oakdale Construction. He enjoyed fishing, racing, and riding his four-wheeler. He was also a hunter, and owned several guns, and a bow and arrow. Kevin met Tammy Lynn, and the two started seeing each other. The two married and moved to Morgan in 1999, into a home Kevin had transformed into a modest palace. The concreted front port had lovely columns. The back porch was a wooden deck with a swing chair above it, all overlooking a vegetable garden. In the yard sit a swing set for the children. He built a huge garage which housed two pickup trucks, an all-terrain vehicle, a motorcycle, and his hot rod 1960s Chevrolet Chevelle, which he often raced at the local tracks. The pristinely kept home was located on Chartiers Road in Greene County, Pennsylvania. Tammy Lynn Teagarden was born on April 21, 1971 in Jefferson, Pennsylvania. She graduated from Carmichael's Area High School. She grew up going to Carmichael's Free Methodist Church. Tammy worked at Milan Pharmaceuticals in Morgantown, West Virginia. She recently began working night shifts. She had a deep love of dancing. The couple had two children. Madison Teagarden, age 8, and 22-month-old Kevin Teagarden. Madison attended the Center for Performing Arts in Carmichael's where she enjoyed dancing. She also was a third-grade student at Jefferson Morgan Elementary School. Little Kevin Jr. was nicknamed Little Buck due to him being born on the first day of hunting season. When Kevin's mother could no longer babysit for Kevin Jr., Kevin quit his job with Oakdale Construction to be a stay-at-home dad. Kevin was often seen outside in the yard playing with the children. On September 25 in 2011, Kevin found out that his first cousin, Mary Rose Johnson, was shot and killed in Ohio by her boyfriend. Then the boyfriend killed himself. The couple recently separated. Tammy Lynn recently moved in with a woman she works with, and would stay weekends at her father's home while the children visited with their father. Kevin told his brother Charles over the phone that he was worried that his wife was going to take custody of their children. He told his brother, if she's going to take the kids, I'll take them all out. He went on to say he could not live without his kids. Kevin often called his mother in tears over his crumbling marriage. At around 10 p.m. on Sunday night Tammy Lynn's sister stopped by the home to check on the family after Tammy Lynn did not show up for work. When she entered the home, she found eight-year-old Madison dead in the kitchen. She immediately called 911. State police were sent to the home where they found Tammy Lynn and both children dead from gunshot wounds. Kevin was also found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Trooper Bartlemansky said it's believed that Mr. Teagarden killed his family before taking his own life sometime between 6.30 and 9.30 p.m., he went on to say the gun was found by Kevin Teagarden's body. Trooper Lemansky described the scene as being like a horror movie. The Greene County Coroner's Office said that each died of a single gunshot wound. Mr. Teagarden's death was ruled a suicide, and the other deaths were ruled homicides. It's a situation where people would not have expected violence would come to this home, Greene County Coroner Gregory Rohanna said. Authorities said police had never been called to the home prior to this tragedy. Neither Kevin nor Tammy Lynn Teagarden had any criminal records. Neighbor Rocky Nelson said, if there was something going on, he hid it well because he was always so nice. I was shocked and everyone I've talked to this morning about it is shocked. Just can't believe it. Not Kevin. Kevin was a good down-to-earth guy. Do anything for anybody if he could. Flo Vrabel, Kevin Teagarden's mother, said all he wanted was his family to be with him. He talked to me every day about the situation. He was torn up over it. 
Friends and neighbors placed flowers and teddy bears by the family's mailbox. The family's dog was waiting on the back deck for owners that would never return. Funeral services were held at Carmichael's Free Methodist Church on October 1 in 2011. Kenneth Robert Ayres, 52 years old, was born on August 14 in 1960. He graduated from Juniata Valley High School in 1979. He was employed as a truck driver by Allen's Custom Hauling in Spring Mills. In his free time he enjoyed NASCAR and the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was an avid hunter. Kenneth was married to Holly Jo Ayres, age 50. The couple had one child, a son, Michael. Michael Ayres was born on September 9 in 2010. He was in a toddler class at Lewistown Children's Center. He loved John Deere tractors, trucks, bulldozers, cars, books and puzzles. He enjoyed being read Goodnight, Goodnight Construction Site before bed. He had a very active imagination with a great sense of humor. Ayers was under court order to not contact his wife, Holly, due to abuse. He was allowed supervised visits with his two-year-old son, Michael, at his mother's home, Mary Ayers. Her home was on Manor Hill Road, in Barry Township near Petersburg. Shortly before 9 a.m. on March 23 in 2013 during a routine custody exchange visit at his mother's home in Petersburg, Pennsylvania, Kenneth and Holly began arguing. Kenneth Ayers punched Holly in the face, then grabbed a 40 caliber pistol from his car, and shot his estranged wife in both legs, and then in the right arm, disabling her. He then grabbed his young son, shot him point-blank in the back, then threw him in the back seat of his car. Holly was still alive and mustered all her strength to get to his car, and retrieved her son. However, after picking up the boy, Ayers shot her in the face. He then turned and shot at his own mother. At around 9 a.m. police received an emergency call about shots being fired. Police were immediately dispatched to the scene where they found the lifeless body of two-year-old Michael Ayers, Holly Ayers was shot four times, and his mother was uninjured. Holly was taken by ambulance to Altoona Regional Health System, she was in stable condition and expected to survive. After the shootings, Kenneth Ayers fled the scene in his car. He drove to his residence in McAlevey's Fort where he switched to his pickup truck. Police began a frantic search for Ayers. He was considered armed and dangerous. After several hours, his truck was located by the State Police Special Emergency Response Team. His body was found in his parked truck in a wooded area of Route 550 in Warriors Mark Township. He died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Police began an investigation. In Ayers' home they found evidence that he had been planning the shooting for about a week. No suicide note was found. Ayers was arrested in 2010 for violating the order of protection against his wife, and domestic violence. He only served a four-day sentence. He was arrested again several months later for again violating his protection order. This time he was not jailed but another year was added to the protection order, and he was fined. Eventually Holly was able to get a permanent protection order against her husband. Both Holly and Aya's mother, Mary, gave statements to police confirming that the two-year-old Michael was not accidentally hit by stray bullets, but intentionally killed by his own father. Holly later said in an interview that Kenneth's elderly parents took away all of his guns after she took the baby and left him. His parents put all the guns in a safe. However, the gun used in the shootings turned out to be one of the guns his parents had confiscated. It's unclear how he was able to retrieve the gun from the locked safe. She said she is not anti-gun, that she grew up in a family that owned guns. She thinks the average person should be able to own a gun, but mentally ill people, and people who have protection orders against them should not be allowed access to guns. She said she believes those people should have their guns taken away, and given to the police. 
She feels it's way too easy to get guns back when family or friends take the guns. She said, an abuser's right to own a gun does not trump a two-year-old boy's right to grow up. Holly Ayers said she had warned the courts that he had guns, and that he told her that she and their child would be better off dead. She was able to obtain a permanent protection from abuse order, but the judge did not order Ayers to surrender his guns, even after he violated the protection order in 2010. Holly has been pushing for a Pennsylvania law that would require those with protection orders against them to surrender their guns. The system failed my son, and I am going to do whatever it takes to make sure it never happens to another child, or another woman, she said. Michael's life to me was priceless. If you can at least reduce the amount of homicides, this is a no-brainer to me. Huntington County District Attorney George Zanuck said, words can't describe the scene, heartbreaking. Michael Ayers Memorial Service was held on March 29 in 2013. He was buried at Church Hill Cemetery in Reedsville. Kevin Teagarden couldn't accept his wife leaving with their children. Instead of moving on, he took the lives of those he claimed to love the most, his children. When someone can pull the trigger on their own children, that is not love, that is control. He was losing control, and his possessions were getting taken away. He was a monster. The state of Pennsylvania failed Holly Jo Ayers. She was severely injured, and her two-year-old son, Michael, lost his life due to the courts not listening to Holly. She requested he be forced to relinquish his guns but that order was refused. Not long after, her son was murdered in front of her by his own father. Pennsylvania, and other states, should always force guns be relinquished when there's a protection order or any threat of violence. Kenneth Ayers was an evil monster. May the victims in both cases rest in peace. That concludes this episode. Keep your eye out for the next volume, coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.